This video is about optimal prediction. So I'll run through an example, well, a few variants on the same example first intuitively, and then we'll write down some math to see if we can formalize our intuition using uh, expected loss minimization. So imagine you have a die here, and you're going to roll it, and you're trying to predict the outcome. Sounds simple enough. Uh, to simplify it even more, you're just going to predict whether it will be 1 or something else. So, as you might guess, if you someone just asks you, I'm going to roll the die, what do you think it'll be? You would probably say something other than 1 not 1, uh, because 1 only has a 1 -sixth probability of appearing, assuming it's a fair die, uh, whereas the something else would have a 5 -sixth probability. So you'd pick the something else, you'd roll it, well, sometimes you're wrong, of course. Uh, that doesn't mean it was a bad prediction or a bad guess, uh, it just means sometimes you get unlucky. So you can roll it again. Oops. So three. I promise I'm not cheating. Oh, well, <laughs> maybe it's not a fair die. It keeps coming up one. Anyway, uh, now imagine instead of just wanting to be right or wrong, we add in some prizes here. So if it's one, and you predicted that it would be one, you win this lovely jar of strawberry tarragon jam. That's our prize number one. If it's something else, and you correctly predicted that it would be something else, you win this nice tomato. Here. So first, to try to keep it as simple as possible, imagine you just really do not like tomatoes. They're just not for you. Uh, in other words, it has just zero value. In that case, you really don't care if you win a tomato. It's as good as winning nothing. You only care about winning the jam. Now, the only way you can win the jam is if you predict one. So in that case, intuitively, you would always predict one, and most of the time you would lose. You would not win anything, but of course you didn't care about winning the tomato anyway, uh, so it's just as well to you. And then occasionally, of course, now that I'm trying to roll the one, I'll never <laughs> roll the one. Anyway, eventually uh, you might get a one and you'd win the jam and you'd be very happy. Now, what if it were not quite as extreme? What if, say, you valued the jam twice as much as the tomato? In that case, it's not quite as clear, at least not as obvious, what you should guess. Um, but you might think, well, this one, it, it's a lot less likely to come up than something else, um, and I only value the jam twice as much as the tomato, uh, whereas it's five times more likely to get something else than to get one. So two times the value doesn't seem like it'll make up for being only one-fifth the probability. So you might just intuitively guess, um, you'll guess something else, and then uh, most of the time you'll win. You'll only win the tomato and not the jam, but you're still pretty happy with the tomato. So. Um, right, you roll it, you get a two, you say, hey, I got a tomato, I'm pretty happy with that. If I had guessed one, I would have won nothing and been a bit sad. So 
let's see if we can formalize all of that in our expected loss minimization framework. So the first thing we want to do, the first step, is to write down the loss function. So as in the textbook, the loss function is this L for loss, and it's a function of two things. The, the Y is the actual value. So in this case, it would be Y can either be 1 or it can be something else. And then G is our guess or our prediction, if you want to be fancy. Um, and that can have the same possible values, either one or something else. So as in the textbook, I will write it such that each row in our uh, loss function matrix is for a particular guess. So I'll make a square or rectangle. Oh. Who am I kidding? It's not even a rectangle. I'll make some sort of convex shape. And so I'll put the guess on this side. It'll either be 1 or I'll put E for else, anything else. And then on the top, the true value can either be Y or something else. Now we'll start with the tricky one where the jam is twice as valuable as the tomato. So the specific numbers don't matter as long as we're representing the twice as valuable. So just to make the math easy, since there's six sides on a die, we'll have the jam worth 12 and the tomato 6. Now there's a few different ways that will give us the exact same optimal prediction to write this. Um, one way would be to think of uh, sort of starting out at zero. So if you, uh, if it's actually a one and you guess something else, you'll be wrong. You could think of that as zero. And similarly, if it's truly something else, but you had guessed one, uh, you don't win anything. So again, you could imagine that's basically zero. Uh, in the case where it's one and you guessed one, that's when you win the jam. Now, when you win something, winning is like negative losing. So remember, this is a loss function. So negative numbers are good. So we'll put a negative 12. So it's a good jam. And then the tomato is half as good. So we'll put minus 6. Now, I'll uh, hopefully remember to show this a bit later. Equivalently, you can add or subtract a constant from all the cells within each column. So instead of this, we could also add 12 to everything in the first column. Just stand that up. So add 12, add 12 to get 0 and 12. I'll draw a box just to keep me honest here. And then in the second column, you could also add 12 if you want, or you could add 6 uh, to get 6 and 0. Either way is OK. So one way to interpret this version of the loss function is thinking, OK, for a given value of y, 
think about the best possible outcome. In this case, when y is 1, the best possible outcome is winning the jam. And then you essentially normalize everything so that the best outcome is 0. This is a very <laughs> pessimistic way of living life, but so it is. And then you just compare everything else to that. So if the jam is 0, not having jam is like sort of losing jam. So that's a loss of 12, because you've lost the jam that was worth 12 utils. Uh, and then in the case where y is something else, your best case scenario is that you are correct and you win the tomato. So you normalize that to zero. Then you say, compared to having a tomato, how bad is it to have nothing? Well, that's like you've lost six utils, let's say. Um, so that's why there's a six. So remember, it's a loss function, so positive numbers are bad and bigger positive numbers are worse than smaller positive numbers. Uh, but of course, here, if we're just looking, normalizing within a column, we can't really compare between columns. Um, but you could, if you wanted it to be comparable, just take everything in the original one and add 12. So your reference point is having a jam and then you just say, how bad is everything compared to having a jam? So in that case, having a jam is what we call zero. Um, here is where we're wrong, so that's like losing a jam. So that'd be like a loss of 12. Here you're wrong, you come away with nothing. So again, compared to having a jam, that's like losing 12. And over here, compared to having a jam, here you have a tomato. So that's like losing a jam, but gaining a tomato. So you lose 12, but you gain six. So that's a loss of six. Uh, now, I won't go through all of the low-level calculations for each version, but you can sort of see once we set it up uh, how if you plug in different versions of this loss function, you'll get the same conclusion regardless. So the next thing we can do from this is compute the expected loss for each possible guess. Um, so it doesn't really matter which one we use. I'm going to use this middle version because it has two zeros and no negative numbers. So it'll just save me a little bit of ink. So if we look at expected value, the loss. Now here, note up here, this is a lowercase y. This is lowercase. And this is an uppercase y, because when we're taking the expected value, it's an expected value over the distribution of y. And uh, first we can think about when we guess 1. So as you remember, expected value means, um, so here if g is 1, we're looking at this first row. So we take a value times the probability of that y value, and then this loss value times the probability of that y value. So we'll have probability that y equals 1 times, uh, I'll write it out more explicitly the first time, uh, the loss where y is 1 and, of course, g is 1, and plus the probability that y is equal to something else besides 1, times the loss when y is something else, and we guessed 1. So we can now plug in the numbers. We know all those numbers. 
So remember, because we have a six-sided die, that is roughly fair. Coming up one is a one-sixth probability. And then the loss, sorry, should be pointing over here. You can just read off over here. Um, and then if it's one-sixth here, it must be five-sixths over here. And then uh, we get a six for loss when y is e and g is one. So all together, this zeroes out, and we just get five six times six, which is five. Now we do the same thing for our other possible guess. We can guess something else. Um, it'll again be the same probabilities, but just plugging in the losses from the bottom row. So I won't write out the equation, I'll just jump to the numbers here. So now there's a 12 for the loss when uh, y is 1 and our guess is something else. And then zero in the other case. That's why the zeros make it nice when you're computing. So one six times twelve is just two. So now the second step just says we should guess or the optimal prediction is whichever value of g gives us the smallest expected loss. So here we have 2 and 5. So 2 is smaller. So that means our optimal guess is something else. And if you remember, that matches our intuition that uh, if we at least value the tomato half as much as the jam, uh, we should still guess something else, so then we'll win the tomato most of the time, even though we don't value it uh, as much as the jam. Now, to return to a point from earlier, we can see once we set it up like this, if we were to switch over, say, to this version instead of this one, uh, here the first column remains the same. The only difference is in the second column we've added 6 to each value. Now if we add 6 here and we add 6 here, that's the same as adding 6 times 5 sixths to the final expected loss, or in other words, adding 5 to the expected loss. And again, adding 5 6 times 6 to the expected loss here. So we're just adding 5 here, adding 5 here. So we would get a 10 up here, 7 down here. Again, 7 is smaller, right? 2 is less than 5. It's smaller by 3. 7 is less than 10 by 3. So even though the expected loss values change, they're just both shifting up or down by the exact same amount. So when the ultimate purpose is trying to figure out the optimal prediction by finding the minimum expected loss, it doesn't matter whether we just add a constant. Um, and so if we just add a constant to all the values in a column, we'll still end up with the same optimal prediction. Now to re return to the original version with the 0, 1 loss quickly, just to see that. Um, in that case, our expected loss um, so remember for 0, 1 loss, you can just have 
0 if you're right and 1 if you're wrong. So we're just replacing 12 and 6 with 1 and 1. Otherwise we have the same exact formulas up here. We just have 1, 6 times 0 plus 5, 6 times 1. We have 5, 6. I'm not very good at pronouncing sixths. Uh, whereas if we guess something else, we'll be wrong and get a loss of one, one-sixth of the time. In other words, whenever it comes up one. But we'll be right five-sixths of the time and get zero loss. And so again, our optimal prediction is something else. Uh, we could also do the case where you really don't care for tomatoes. Um, in that case, instead of uh, zero six, you're sort of indifferent between whether you uh, have a tomato or not. So these two cells are the same. Um, again, since they're the same, we can set them to any number. So we can just make it 0, 0. So we'd have 0, 0, 0, 12. And so the only, we'll have 0 loss for, we, for guessing 1, and we'll have a loss of 2, like before, for guessing something else. So in that case, you'd want to guess 1, because your expected loss is zero, which is smaller than two. And again, that also matches our intuition that um, if really the only good state is winning the jam, you may as well try to win the jam. Okay, so you know, that's a lot of uh, intuition and math to cram into one video, so maybe I'll go have a nice tomato and jam sandwich or something. Uh, hope that was helpful.